What's going on guys? My name is Brian Sanchez and today I want to take you through everything that I take with me into the theme parks. Now before we go into all the details of that, I do have a question that I want to ask you guys. As many of you know, me and Melissa are getting married soon. Uh, we were talking about possibly doing a Disney trip for our honeymoon and we started talking about possible destinations and we've narrowed it down to two that we're thinking about so I wanted to get your opinions. What do you think is a better honeymoon spot? Now we could go to Disneyland in California. Melissa's been there once. I've never been there. Or we could go to Disneyland Paris. Neither of us has ever even been to France. Thank you so much for the suggestions. Make sure you leave them in the comments below. Now let's get into the theme park bags. Oh, and if you're going to Universal, there's a couple of things that we do differently. So you're gonna wanna make sure you stay to the end of this video and I'll point out the differences in a Universal bag versus a Disney bag. Now first up is the bag itself. Now, a lot of people uh, try and do the really small, cute, uh, bags that you can find on Amazon that have like Mickey ears on them, things like that. The problem that I find with those bags is they tend to break really easily. So in my opinion, you want to invest in a good sturdy bag. The one that we use right now is this one. This is an Adidas bag. Uh, it is a sport bag. It has tons and tons of compartments, which is perfect for a Disney bag. Uh, the thing I like about it the most though, and something that I look for in a theme park bag, is padding on the back to make sure that it's not gonna hurt your back as much. And then the straps are wide and padded as well, so that you're not just putting all the pressure of the bag on one single spot on your shoulders uh, or on your neck. Uh, it really, really does help carry the load of all the things that you put in here because I'm not gonna lie, there can be a lot of things in this bag. Something else that I'd look at when picking out a bag is water resistance. You don't want all the stuff inside getting completely drenched, so some level of water resistance is gonna be really, really important. So that's another thing that I would look for when picking your bag. Now once you've picked out your bag, the one thing that I always tell everyone to take with them anytime they go to any theme park, particularly the ones in Florida, is a raincoat. We typically don't do umbrellas. Uh, they're clunky, they take up a lot of space in the bag, and then once you're using them, you're likely to poke somebody in the eye with it when it's up in the crowds and you're trying to navigate down a crowded Main Street or a, you know things like that. So we have invested in some rain jackets. Now, I say invest, uh, I believe this one I got at uh, our local sporting goods store, uh, and I wanna say it was like 25 bucks. Uh, but honestly, uh, something that is waterproof, the zippers are waterproof as well. Um, you know, it's got pockets on the sides for you to be able to store cell phone, things like that. A hood that goes over the top is a must. These were a lifesaver the last day that we were in the parks on our most recent Universal trip. Uh, it rained really hard in the morning and it actually got really cold. Uh, because they're waterproof, they don't breathe as much, so they actually do work, if it's a chillier day, not too bad, they can actually help to keep you warm as well. And that's really why I say to get a rain jacket instead of a poncho. A poncho is made out of a much flimsier material, and I can almost guarantee you, uh, if you buy those before you leave the parks, they will rip. Now the other thing that I never go to a theme park without is an extra pair of socks. Now, one of the worst feelings in the world is walking around a theme park with soaked feet. Uh, you know, it, even if it's not raining, again, if you went on a ride that you didn't expect to get wet on and it splashed over and soaked through your shoes and your socks, uh, if that happened early in the day, you're kind of stuck with it if you don't have an extra pair of socks. Um, a dry pair of socks can really save your feet in a situation like that. Uh, so even if there's no rain in the forecast, I definitely take a jacket and I take uh, the socks because those two things can save your day on a water ride. Now we obviously all take our cell phones into the parks uh, and we are using them constantly. From park maps to scheduling dining reservations, checking fast passes at Disney, your battery is gonna drain so fast it's not even funny. Uh, there's been a lot of success lately from people using the fuel rods. Now if you don't know what a fuel rod is, it's an external battery uh, that has a USB port on it and you can plug your phone into it, recharge it, uh, and then the cool thing about a fuel rod is that when it's dead, instead of having to recharge it yourself, there are kiosks around the parks that you can go and swap that one for a fresh one that is fully charged. Now that's a very convenient thing, and again, a lot of people have had a lot of success with these, 
but recently I've been hearing that they are starting to charge $3 to swap that battery for a fresh one. Now some folks would say that's probably enough for them, it's not a big deal, $3 to swap it out. Me personally, I've found another option that I think works out better than a fuel rod and has a couple of things that make it more effective. So this is an external charger that I bought on Amazon a few years ago for about 30 bucks. What makes this better than a fuel rod? Well, first off, the fuel rod only has one charging port. Uh, the RAV Power one here has two. So I can charge my phone, Melissa can charge hers, or I can charge my phone and the camera or any other electronic device that can be plugged into a USB port. Now the thing that makes this way better than a fuel rod is the capacity. Uh, this thing has a 16,750 milliamp battery. If I'm not mistaken, that is six times the size of a fuel rod. Look, without getting into really geeky, boring details, I'll tell you this. Before we went to Universal, I actually forgot to charge this. So this is still holding over from the last trip that we took to Disney in October the year before. We used this for four days straight, charging both of our phones multiple times a day, and still had battery in this thing. You take this on your Disney vacation, it'll last you the entire trip. Now of course we have charging cables for all the electronic devices that we carry, uh, cell phones, cameras, things like that. Uh, I won't go into detail on the cameras, we have a GoPro, we have a stabilizer for the cell phone so that we can do vlogs. Uh, not everybody needs those, so of course if you wanna take those things, you definitely can. I wanna stick to the essentials on this video though, so uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is a little medicine kit. Uh, this thing can really save your life. Uh, what we usually do is a little makeup pouch like this, something small and then we look for travel size uh, versions of some of the stuff that we put in here. Obviously the first thing you're gonna need is sunscreen, a really, really good sunscreen. Uh, SPF 30 is the stuff that we use. Uh, obviously, if you wanna go higher, by all means go higher. Uh, sun protection is no joke, especially in Florida. You'd be amazed at how quickly you can get sunburned, even on a cloudy day. It does happen, it's nuts. Tissues and baby wipes are another thing that you're definitely gonna wanna pack. Travel size ones fit in that compartment. You're probably only gonna need a few, unless of course you're traveling with children, but you probably have a diaper bag and that whole nine, so. Anyways, moving on. Advil Band-Aids and Tums are a must because Casey's Corner is delicious. We're both really clumsy and love to fall and scrape our knees. And this bag gets heavy and sometimes your feet are definitely gonna hurt. The very last thing in that little makeup bag is hand sanitizer. Look, think about this. How many other people have been leaning on that rail that you have been leaning on in the queue for It's a Small World all stinking day? When was the last time you think that was cleaned? Yeah, hand sanitizer. Oh, and extra deodorant. Your fellow park guests will thank you. Now onto some of the more fun stuff. Now the first thing that everyone gets when they book a Disney vacation, of course now, at Disney World at least, is a magic band. Uh, of course, this is your ticket, your hotel room key. Uh, if you're staying on property, you can also charge purchases in the parks and restaurants and things uh, to your room using this thing. Uh, of course, the ones that you get from Disney with your stay are solid colors, uh, and then they sell a bunch of uh, specialty ones with featuring characters and rides and different designs. Uh, my favorite one right now that I've been rocking is this uh, orange bird one. I don't know if you can see that, get it to focus. There we go. Uh, it's this little orange bird one. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I love the orange bird. Uh, this is actually still the first generation one. Uh, now they have a little removable puck in the middle that's a little bit wider. Uh, these are fun though, so definitely you can stack up on a couple of these. You can have different ones for each day. Now a new obsession of mine, uh, something I'm relatively new to, is pin trading. So if you are into pin trading, uh, you're gonna wanna have some pins. Now a lot of people do them on a lanyard. Uh, I just put them in a little pocket because I don't like to have a whole bunch of things hanging off of me. Uh, but if you don't know what pin trading is, essentially, uh, any cast member that you see uh, with little pins on, uh, you can trade with them uh, with pins that you can uh, buy little starter packs in the stores and there's kiosks as well that you can buy singles uh, and they feature things like uh, characters from the rides and movies and stuff. Uh, so yeah, always have a handful of those in my bag to be able to trade if I find some really cool ones. Another thing that we've done uh, for a long, long time, uh, it's a really fun souvenir, uh, it's really cheap and kind of, uh, you know, easy to do, uh, is pressed pennies. Now, pressed pennies uh, have recently made way to pressed coins, like quarters and dimes and stuff. So, uh, the first thing that we do is we usually get a little uh, tube like this for like M&M's minis, and we stack up 
Uh, it's usually 51 cents, so uh, two quarters and a penny uh, on the inside there, and we stack them so that when we come to a pressed penny machine, we know we've got it ready to go, we just slide them out, put them in the machine, set it to the which one we want, and then crank it out. Now once we have our press penny, uh, we've actually gone out and gotten one of these little press penny books. Now these are really awesome to keep track of your press pennies and a really cool way to show off the ones that you've gotten. So uh, as you can see, they uh, kind of fill in these little slots here and we've got a ways to go. We've got uh, two other ones in there that are super full of press pennies. Now one more fun thing that we keep in our bag is gift cards. Now this one is left over from uh, Food and Wine Festival, so it's it came on a little lanyard and it's got Remy on there and stuff, but uh, essentially this is a great way to save up for your Disney trips. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that anything at Walt Disney World uh, and online can be purchased with standard Disney gift cards. So for the months and months that you're uh, saving up and waiting to go to these uh, trips, you can buy gift cards and then once you get down there, you can kind of augment some of that cost by having already spent it. Now, again, we usually have at least three or four on here, uh, and so like smaller purchases, like food, lunch, things like that, a bottle of water here, a Mickey bar there, we usually put them on a gift card so that we don't see those small transactions on our regular debit card so we can keep better eye on how much money that we're spending in the parks. And now the last thing that we keep in our bags every single time that we go is a park map. Now I know what you're thinking, there are park maps on the Disney app now, so why would I want a paper map? Well, first of all, uh, a paper map is a really awesome souvenir uh, to take home because it is free. Just walk up to the registers in most of the gift shops or at the kiosk at the very front of the park. You can grab one. It has tons and tons of information there. Uh, a lot of times the app itself won't open. Uh, you know, if you don't have Wi-Fi or, or mobile data, you can't open it up, you won't really know. Definitely pick yourself up one or two or in the case of myself, way too many. Um, I'm kind of obsessed. I have a fairly large collection. Help! And that is just about it. That's pretty much everything that we put in our Disney bag. Uh, now, the one thing that I will say that's a different about a universal bag is gonna be the bag itself that you choose. Now, I know I started this video by saying you needed to get a really good sturdy bag like this, but at Universal, there's a different dynamic when it comes to riding the rides with a bag. Essentially at Disney, you are able to ride pretty much any ride with the bag on you. However, at Universal, they do not allow any items on pretty much any of the rides. You are forced to put your items in a locker. Now they do offer free lockers when you do get on the ride for a small window of time, but those lockers are very, very small. So the change that we make on our Universal bag is we go from the big Adidas bag to this Under Armour drawstring bag. Now, this thing is super thin. The straps are these little cord material, uh, and honestly, it does get kind of painful from time to time. Uh, however, uh, I see tons and tons of people trying to jam these giant oversized bags into these really, really small lockers, and it does not happen. What they're forced to end up doing is paying for a larger locker, and then even those lockers don't always fit some of those larger bags. I'm not certain that our uh, Adidas bag would fit in one of those larger lockers. So uh, save yourself a little bit of a headache, uh, get you a smaller bag if you're going to Universal, uh, and maybe take just a few of the things that you would take to Disney out when you do the Universal bag. For instance, magic bands, pins. Uh, there are some pressed penny machines, but not as much, so maybe you don't have to take that. Uh, but I would definitely still take rain jacket, socks, uh, pick up some park maps, uh, the battery and the chargers. Uh, you also can't film on any of the rides either, so your camera gear may not necessarily be as much. Uh, and then again, if you do want to take a camera bag, uh, I mean, you, you can, uh, but someone's going to have to probably sit with it uh, or you're going to have to rent a larger locker, uh, you know, but then you can put all that stuff in a separate carry 
bag. So that's going to do it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you've made it to the end here and you have some items that you put in your bag that I didn't mention, uh, leave them in the comments. Let me know what you guys take. What kind of bags do you take? Uh, do you think that I had a good list? Is there anything that I left off? Uh, let me know in the comments. I really do appreciate this to make sure that you guys have all the information that you need when you plan your Disney and Universal vacations. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. We're going to be doing a ton more tips and reviews. We'll see you guys around and one love.